What up, crazy crew? Casey Too Crazy here. Going to be going over a deck profile for Gecko Moria. Currently my favorite leader. I've won three locals with him. I'm very comfortable with this deck. I like it a lot. With Moria, you attach one Dawn. You turn him sideways to attack, to swing. But before your attack actually happens, you do his effect. It is required to have two extra Dawn in your cost area to do this effect. So you rest two in your cost area. You send a card from your hand to your trash. You trash two cards from your deck or as we say you mill two cards to your grave to your trash and then you are able to take a thriller bark character from your trash and that has to be a four cost or lower like absalom sindri perona hogback and you can send them from your trash to your board this is a way for you to play a four cost character only using three dawn very advantageous after they go to your board if they have an effect like if you play perona you're forcing your opponent to trash a card after that effect they have to defend your attack so your swing so effect first attack second we have victorious sindri sindri is a 2k counter 2k power you're basically using her to get five cards from your deck into your trash if you play her for one dawn you add five to your trash you build up your graveyard it can really help you to set up your attacks later with moria or to get thriller bark characters in your trash to play out onto your board then we have perona Perona is a four cost 5k power. She's also a 2k counter. Really, really good in two ways. If your opponent has five cards in their hand or more and you play her onto your board, they are forced to discard a card from their hand. If you choose to, to do that effect, if you want to do the other effect, you can minus three cost from one of their characters on their board. You do this if you want to pop them with a removal card like Absalom or Lucci, or let's say if you have Brooke. So there are a number of cards you could use to actually pop them off the board. So typically you want to see her opening hand, same with Sindri. So that first turn you can play Sindri, second turn you can play Perona, and then force your opponent to discard a card and then take a hit from Moria. I didn't mention before, I'm running four Sindri, also running four Perona. Basically at the end it's going to be the deck that I run. Absalom's going to be a removal for Thriller Bark. He's a 1k counter, 4 cost, 5k power. When you use him, you have to get the opponent down to 2 cost or lower. You can cheat him out with Moria, so you're only spending 3 Dawn. Get him out there on the board. When you use his effect, you do have to bottom deck 2 cards from your trash. Show your opponent before you put them on the bottom. And then you remove the card on their board, send it to their trash. Next up, we have Dr. Hogback, running four of him as well. If you need to get Moria, let's say you're playing and it's before your eight or nine on turn, you want to have Moria set aside for most matchups. And when you play Hogback out, you take two cards from your trash and bottom deck them after you show them to your opponent. Then you can take any Thriller Bark card from your trash and put it to your hand. You also have to show your opponent what card you're choosing before you put it to your hand. This could be an event card that's a Thriller Bark, could be a stage, could be a character card pretty wild usually people use him to get moria or 2k counters like perona or sindri if you're going up against an aggro deck or you need some defense maybe you're going up against yamato need to defend against those banish attacks or need to defend against those double attacks he's really good to help you build up your hand Okay, then we have the star of our show, Gecko Moria. This is a crazy black card, 8 cost, 9k power. When you use him, you can play out a 4 cost or less and a 2 cost or less character from your trash to your board. The 2 cost or less has come out rested. When you do this, you, there are so many different combos that you can have set up. As you practice and you move forward with this deck, you'll get to learn those combos. You could go the route where you want to draw cards. You could do removal or you could do block. Blocking. So there's a lot of stuff you can do set up for future attacks or defense. So many options. This is a really, really good card. If you don't have four of these, I would pick them up right away because they're probably just going to go up. It is essential. It's not being banned anytime soon. Definitely really, really good card. Another one I'm running four of, I'm running four of every card up to this point so far, is Suru. Suru is Navy. She is a 2k counter, but more importantly, she reduces two costs on your opponent's character. Let's say you're going to use Moria and you want to set up the board so you can pop some characters. You can play one or two of her to reduce costs and then put out Moria and then use Rob Lucci, could even be Absalom, in conjunction with another cost reducing card to get rid of some bigger bodies on your board. She's searchable with brand new coming up awesome card 
Then we have Branu. He is our Navy searcher. So when you play out Branu, he's two cost, 1K counter. You look at the top three cards of your deck. Might as well just show them to your opponent when you do this. That's what I always do. I just flip them face up on the board or on the field. If you find a Navy card, you can put it to your hand. It can be an event or character. You're good to go. So if you find like Ice Age for now, Great Eruption until it gets banned in July, add it to your hand. The rest go to your trash. So it helps build up your grave for your later attacks. Also running four of brand new. Then we have Rob Lucci. This is from OPO5. He is able to pop two of your opponent's characters off the board if you get them down to two cost or less and one cost or less. So he's better than Absalom in the sense that he can get rid of two characters. He's also a 6k power, whereas Absalom is a 5k power. But he can't be cheated out with Moria, whereas Absalom can. Rob Lucci, though, so good. I run three of him. Doesn't disappoint. Really good soldier out there there. Then we have Borsalino, the dude shooting light around, right? Pretty cool in the anime. I'm a big fan of him. Pretty dope. Very chill, laid back. But with him, very good card. If you don't have it yet, you need to get it. Amazing blocker. Cannot be taken out by effects. He can be sent to your trash if the opponent has something like Brook, if they're running black, or if they bottom deck. That's the other thing. Besides that, typically like in a mirror match, he works out really, really well. When your opponent's attacking, he has 6k power. So then they got to swing even more. He just protects your life, your board. If someone's going to swing 5k at you, I would block with him. That's kind of, you know, it's the whole point of doing his job. Bob, but Borsalino running three, just like with Rob Lucci. Next up, another star of the show is Sabo. Sabo protects your board when you play him out. If you are going to play another card, you need to make sure you play it before him because if you play it after you put him on your board, he does not protect it from being popped with effects. So Sabo should be the last one you play on your turn. He draws two, trashes two from your hand. You get to basically cycle through your hand, look for more 2k counters or what you need for future attacks. Super good card. Uh, if you don't have him yet, definitely pick him up. Prices are probably going to keep going up on him because he's that important. I'm running three Sabo. Helmeppo, also running three Helmeppo. 1k counter, but more importantly, he reduces the cost of a character by three. He usually is used with Rob Lucci. So if you reduce the cost of your opponent's characters, you put Moria out there, then you put Lucci or Absalom and Helmeppo. You can take out some pretty big cost characters or two blockers is what I'll go for so that you can get some attacks through. Sometimes when you're being attacked, you want to counter with him so that he goes to the trash so you can use him with Fra Blucci or Absalom. Kuzan, you know, we have a love-hate relationship, me and him, in a sense that there's many times where I struggled to basically use him. You know, he's really grown on me. When you play him on the field, doesn't matter who you are going against, but especially colors like yellow, could be even be red. They kind of freak out a little bit when they see this guy because he is very strong. Not only does he draw a card, when you play him out so he replaces himself in your hand he also reduces four costs when he attacks he is just like super powerful you'll see if you play him people attack him like he's a magnet like they need to get rid of him that's why i love this guy he just kind of freaks out your opponent really dope also a cool character in the anime so there's that too getting to the events here running four of these great eruptions. Now, this is something that as of now is going to get banned in July. When you use it, it replaces itself. So you draw a card and then you minus two costs on any of the characters. It's important to note that you can draw the card before you decide what you're going to minus cost on. So you don't necessarily have to minus cost and then draw. Some people do that. I would draw first and then figure out what you're going to you know minus cost on. It also is a trigger card. So with this, you can force your opponent to discard a card from their hand if they're choosing and this can help reduce opponent's hands especially when you need them to have lower hands toward the end of the game so you can go for lethal and the really cool event is ice age it has a trigger so if you take it off life you can pop a three cost or less from your opponent's board or if you use it and you only need one don to use this you minus five costs on one of your opponent's characters if you have two of these and your opponent has say like a big mom if you had nothing else to reduce with and you use two of these, you can take it down with Absalom after that. I mean, there's so many applications. It's really good. If you search it off of brand new, I would take this before I would take Suru or anything else like that, or even a Borsalino. That's also situational. This is just a, re a really good card for what you're trying to do. The purpose of the deck is to do board control, removal. Ice Age is the way to
way to go. If it goes in your trash, you can't even use it. Okay, in summary here, this is the deck I used to win three locals. There was another time where I had changed it up a little bit. I took out Borsalino, I ran Rebecca's, and I reduced Helmeppo Lucci by one each, and even the Kuzans, and I put some Brooks in there for removal and a couple Hinas. Besides that, this one is the most consistent for me. It's most common that I see other people using as well, winning a lot of competitions. But you can't go wrong with this. You want to have all of these cards so that you can see them regularly when you're playing the game. Some people reduce Rob Lucci and Helmepo to two, but then you risk not seeing them when you're playing. That's why I run three of those is just because I want to see those cards. I definitely want to see them. If you play Rebecca and say like if Sabo goes in your trash, you can't use him. You have to bottom deck him. If you're running Rebecca, you can get Sabo. But then you have to think about what else you want to move around in your deck in order to get her to use her effects. Let's talk about the ideal curve. So with this, the curve is how many Dawn you have at any given time when you're playing. On each turn, let's say if your first turn you have one Dawn, the next turn you're going to have three Dawn. You just keep going up from there. So for your turn one, one Dawn, you want to have Sindri so you can play her out and start building up your grave. Now, if I don't get Sindri or Perona, I will typically mulligan to try to at least get one of those. Sindri, though, is ideal for your first turn. Turn two, three Dawn, you want to use Gecko's ability. So if you have a Thriller Bark in hand, you would attach one Dawn, rest two in your cost area, and then swing at the opponent. But before that swing goes through, you send a Thriller Bark from your hand to your trash, play it out from your trash to your board, use their effect. Let's say it's Perona. Ideally, give her priority so you can start reducing your opponent's hand size. Let's say I play Perona. They discard a card, six swing attack. They got to deal with that. If you don't have Thriller Bark, it's not a bad idea to play out brand new and then swing with Moria so you can get two birds with one stone. Brand new, hopefully you get something, a navy card and you can put it in your hand. That's another option. Okay, turn three, five Dawn. Brand new is really good here. And then you can use Moria with his effects. So Moria is only going to use three Dawn, one attached, two rested. Brand new, you're searching. So hopefully you can get something good off of that. If you don't have brand new, I would recommend going for one of these guys. So it could be Sabo, Borsalino, Kuzan. Kuzan's going to give you draw and then apply a lot of pressure. Borsalino is going to provide a blocker for you. If you're going against something like Yamato, you really need that to defend against the double attack. Sabo is going to give you the option to cycle through your hand. You're going to be drawing two cards from your deck and then sending two of your choice to the grave from your hand. So he helps build up your grave a little bit. Or you can even, if you want to focus on removal, you can do that. If you have a Great Eruption or a Suru, you could play one Dawn. And then if you have an Absalom in hand, you can send it to your trash to play it out with Moria's effect. Or if it's in your trash, play it out. If you don't have a Moria at all in your hand, this is when you want to start thinking about about using Hogback's effect to pull Moria from your trash. And if it's not in your trash, try to do something to mill more cards so you can build up that trash and hopefully hit Moria if he's not just sitting in your life or in the bottom of the deck. Turn four, seven, Dawn. Do you have Moria? It's very, very important for you to get him. If you don't have him, look through your trash again, make sure he's either in there or not in there, and then go from there. If he's in your trash, you need to use Moria in order to cheat out Hogback to get Moria from your grave. If you do not have that option, you could do Moria with his effect, play out Absalom, Perona, what have you, and then play something else from your hand. So hard play it, hard cast it from your hand. Could be Borsalino, Kuzan, Rob Lucci. If you're able to do some removal, not a bad idea. If you don't have that set up as an option, you could go the removal route, use some Ice Age, Great Eruption, subtract some Dawn there, and then use either Moria with his effects and Absalom to get out a really high cost character off the board. Or if you need to take out two characters, you could use the events to reduce or Suru, Halmepo, something along those lines, and then use a Luchi from your hand to pop two characters. If you don't have that removal option, you have a Sabo play the Sabo and then attach your remaining Dawn to characters to swing. So you could be attaching them to Moria and swing with another character on board. It's up to you, but you need to start applying pressure. Turn five, nine Dawn. 
you can go a couple different routes. And I'm going to start with the removal option route. You want to start with some type of cost reduction depending on what you're going for. And it's all situational, but that could be Ice Age, Great Eruption, Suru. Remember, you have nine Dawn. Then that leaves you with eight Dawn. You could play out Moria and then play Luchi or Absalom as your first body. And then your second body would either be Helmepo, Suru, or if you don't need further cost reduction at that point, you could play out Brand New to help you search through three more cards. This is really good for removal. Next option on your nine down curve. If you don't need to reduce and pop characters, or if you just don't have that option, you could use Moria, Kuzan, and then Brand New. So Kuzan's going to add a card to your hand and Brand New is going to allow you to search three. You can choose the order in which you want to do that. You could do a Brand New's effect first, Kuzan second, or Kuzan first and Brand New second. Use your remaining Dawn to swing. You could go the blocker route. So with this one, you would play Moria, Borsalino to get a four cost blocker out there and then brand new to search. You could put other cards out there too if you want to just get a body on board. I mean, it could even be like a Suru. I've won games with her before just by attaching five Dawn to her. Whatever else, if you want to cheat something out or if you already have big bodies on board, you don't have to use that secondary card. Just leave the Borsalino, good to go. Then use the extra Dawn to attach your characters and swing or to your leader and swing. Remember, apply pressure. Nine Dawn turn, no Moria. What do you do? All depends on what's in your hand and what you're capable of getting. At this point in the game, you're probably going to start wanting to watch your board, watching your life, being very careful. You might play out something like Borsalino or Kuzan and then play a Sabo that would leave you with another Dawn if you were using Kuzan Borsalino. You could also play something like a Borsalino and a brand new and use the additional Dawn to cheat out a character with Moria's effect. Uh, there's so many different scenarios. You want to be doing something this late in the game, whether it be preparing to stall, if you need to block, to build up your hand or your grade if you need to draw cards, if you need to search for removal, you'll figure it out as you go. You just have to think about things this way. Turn six, 10 Dawn. Blocker option here. You have those two extra Dawn. Use those if you want to, or it would be even better to attach them to a character or your leader and swing, and then use Moria. If you're using Moria, if you needed cost reduction, you could have done that first, and then using Absalom or Luchi. If you needed to, say, get cards out of your opponent's hand, if they have five cards, you could use Perona. You need to block, use Borso, you need to draw, and then apply pressure later, use Kuzan, and then Hogback. Maybe you want to cheat out another Moria or 2k counters from your grave to prepare for later swings, later attacks. You could do that as well. Secondary card, a Mepo is if you need to reduce cost or to get a body out there, it's a 3k body. You could use Sindri, get some more cards in your grave. Brand new, help you search for a navy, and then Suru, cost reduction. Tend on curve, kind of like before with turn five, with turn six, no Moria, play Sabo, play Borso. So with these two dudes, your first choice should be Sabo. He is meant to protect your board. He's really good in the late game. Your second option could be Borsalino and then use the rest of your Dawn to swing. Lay on the pressure. Make your opponent feel nervous. Make them start to sweat a bit. Psych them out. Make them feel like you're getting ready to go for lethal. All right, now we have your going second curve. So it's going to be two, four, six, eight, ten. With this turn one, you have two Dawn. First priority should be a Sindri. If you have a brand new, you could play him, but I would play Sindri instead of Brand New and save Brand New for your third turn. Turn two, priority on Perona. So if you have Moria, you can cheat Perona out there to make your opponent discard a card. Definitely do that. You could even use Absalom for removal. You're just not going to have much in trash. And Hogback, if you want to get something back, let's say you want to get a 2k out of trash, you could use him as well. You don't even have to use his effect, but that's an option. If you don't have any Thriller Bark characters, it is okay to play a Brand New just to help build up your trash at this point and then attach the other two Don to Moria and swing. Swing away. Turn three, six Dawn. This is where you can play a brand new and then use Moria with his effect because you're going to have two Dawn attached to him and then resting the other two. That's four. Brand new is two. Good to go there. Cheat out a character. Or you could use brand new with Sabo. Make sure to play brand new first. Brand new with Borsalino with Kuzan. If you want to go removal route, you could do Great Eruption then attach Dawn to Moria and cheat out Absalom to do removal. If you are looking for Moria, this is where you would use Moria's effect to get Hog back out and hopefully pull Moria from the grave. Turn four, eight on curve. Do you have Moria? You need to prioritize Moria. If you have Moria, then you can go over to the six dudes and the dudette here. Cheat out a Absalom, hard play a Rablucci, cheat out Perona, hard play a Borsalino, a Kuzan. I would put priority on those two guys if you're not too worried about removal, Kuzan and Borsalino. Or if you need to get some two 
2Ks, hey, Hogback's your friend. Then secondary with your other two Dawn, you can play out brand new. And with your other two Dawn, if you need removal, remember you can use Suru Helmepo. If you want to build up your trash more, use Sindri. Hopefully by turn four, you have more cards that you need in your trash, but you always need to be thinking about how you can best utilize your trash with Moria. So Sindri may need to be played. This is another summary for the turn four eight on curve. Prioritize Moria, use Gecko in his effect. Get one of these dudes out there, Borsalino, Kuzan, Rob Lucci, if you can, if you can use them. You could get Sabo out there and swing with Moria. And then use the extra Dawn to swing away. Apply that pressure. Turn five, 10 Dawn curve. If you have the removal option, you want to look at the top here first. Use any two of these at the top if you can to reduce costs on characters. And then you drop Moria. After you drop Moria, you're either doing Lucci or Absalom and then resting the second character to help you reduce. So it could be Helmepo, Suru, or of course, if you want to search, brand new is your friend. Turn five, 10 Dawn. You need a blocker? Hmm, maybe it's possible. It could be your situation. With that one, you want to use your extra Dawn to swing if you can. If you need to reduce at that point, feel free to do that with Great Eruption or what have you, Suru, Helmepo, Ice Age, and then get out one of these other dudes and the dude at Perona. So Absalom, Lucci, Borsalino, Ogback, Kuzan. The other character, remember all the different options, draw, reduction, and milling five to your trash. Turn five, 10 Dawn. If you do not have Moria and you have Sabo, play Sabo. If you don't have Sabo, play Borsalino. And if you have Borsalino, attach the rest of your Dawn to your characters and swing away. Apply that pressure. Make them cry if you can. That's what I try to do. You should be doing that too. If you want to draw cards, you could play out Moria, Kuz on brand new. Really good combo. One of the most common ones out there. If you want to block, of course, Moria, Borsalino, brand new, or another secondary card. Attach your extra Dawn and swing. And these are some other cards that you could put in your deck. There's some EB01 cards. When we get to OP7, I could go over that too, but a, a lot of it doesn't really change, even in the East, the current meta they have. A lot of this is staying pretty much the same, except for you're seeing more Esos, maybe some Brooks. I'm not even seeing so sheep in their lists, negative hollow. But I'm going to go over here. Upper left, you have Rebecca. When you play her out on the field, whether it be just from your hand or from Moria's effect, she is able to take a three cost to a seven cost black character from your trash, put it in your hand, and then she plays out for free, rested on the field, a three cost or lower black character. A lot of people use her with Hina. Hina reduces four costs on an opponent's character if you're choosing. So people will play Rebecca, and if she Hina's in trash, they could pull her from trash and then play her out from hand for free. So you save Dawn that way. Really good to work those, use those two together. Another common card, this 2k counter Tashigi. If you play out Tashigi, it is a three cost. So you could use it as the first part of your effect in Moria. If you needed to, that'd be very rare. Or you could send her out with Rebecca. And when you put her out on the field, if she's rested, you can minus two costs from a character if you're choosing. You can do that every turn if they don't take her out. She's very, very good for cost reduction. Brooke is part of OP06. What's really cool about Brooke is if you play him out on your field, you can send one of your opponent's characters directly to trash. So that you're not KOing them, you're just sending them to trash. When you do that, this negates some of their effects, their KO effects uh, upon removal. Let's say it's like Kikunojo. If you have three life or less and you take Kikunojo out, your opponent doesn't get to add a life. They have to send it directly to trash. If you're in a mirror match and your opponent has Borsalino and use Brooke, you can send Brooke right to trash even though brook is protected from being popped by effects he only cannot be ko'd by effects he can still be sent there just like he can be bottom deck so brook is really good brook actually helped me win one of the locals tournaments final match took out a borsalino then i could swing he came in clutch there cerberus two cost 2k body 1k counter blocker so you play him out unless he's popped by an effect people have to swing and you can block with him then you can put him back on your field with the stage if you're playing the stage stage version of this deck, or you can cheat him out there with Moria. Tends to work well in the mirror match or against yellow decks like Yamato. Really, really good. Inupe is kind of like brand new where you're able to go through four cards, but when you play Inupe out on play, you draw two cards.
cards and discard two cards. And then when he is KO'd, you do that again. So when he's KO'd, draw two, crash two. Pretty cool that you get to use it two times. You get to look at four cards in total versus brand new. You only get to look at three. And with him, you can take any card you want when you're using him. So it doesn't need to be specifically navy like with brand new. Pretty dope card. He's also thriller bark, so he can be cheated out with Moria. Iso, Isho, I'm not to that point in the anime yet. This dude is an eight cost, 9k body. When you play him out on the field, if your opponent has six cards or more, you get to choose two cards at random from their hand in order to throw into the trash. So if your opponent is playing in person, if they want to mix up their cards, they can do that. And then you just choose two at random, toss them in the trash. Each turn you have attached one Dawn to him, it will minus three cost to all characters on the board. It really helps with removal at that point. Kind of similar to 10 drop Kuzan. I didn't even put him on this list, but you could use 10 drop Kuzan. He's a beast in his own right. Just that you got to use 10 Dawn to use him. Take a look at that card as well if you were considering having a big body that also does removal. Next, we have EBO1 Brook. Some of the decks in the East are using this, some are not. He can be pretty cool when you play him and when you are attacking, you can minus one cost of a character. Then you can KO that character if it is a zero cost after your cost has been minused on it. Pretty cool. You can pop characters pretty quickly. Laboon, Laboon, EBO1. Pretty sad story with this guy in the anime. Hopefully he reunites with Brook. I don't know if that ever happens. I'm not that far in the anime. Pretty like deep stuff stuff going on here. From a little guy up to a giant, he's got quite the history. Really cool, really happy that they made a card of him. With Laboon, you play him out for four dawn. He is able to be rested and then you minus four costs from one of your opponent's characters. He can do that every single turn, just like Tashigi. He's kind of like Kino in that he minuses four costs, but you do have to rest him. The plus side though, he has a 1k counter. Soap Sheep wants to get rid of Great Eruption. If you really want cards that can minus two costs, to your characters. You can run these. They're just not searchable with someone like brand new. So it's a CP9. If you do get it in hand, it's good to go. You minus two costs on two of your opponent's characters. So pretty cool card there. Always an option. Thriller Bark, stage card. If you play this out, you have to rest one Dawn in the Dawn area every time you use it. So then if you want to use it, turn it sideways, have that Dawn rested. Then you can cheat out a one to two cost character from your trash that is a Thriller Bark out onto your board. It can help you take out that Cerberus, the Sindri, just really cool card. You can do it every turn. Negative Hollow. I do love Negative Hollow. I used to use it when I first started playing OP06 with Moria. So it's two costs, right? You play him out, you force a card from your opponent's hand. You get to choose at random one of their cards from their hand in order to throw into the trash. Now, if you have two of these, you can play one, play one. You're discarding two from your opponent. Then you can use Dr. Hogback's effect to you get one of these back from trash, use it again with two Dawn, and now you force your opponent to trash three of their cards from their hand. It could potentially help you win a game. When I use it online in the sim against like Reju, it seems to do really well. And now with Law being in the meta, I'm going to start trying to use it against him, seeing what can happen. Super cool card. Also a cool part from the anime. Now that we've talked about those, let's get into some gameplay. This is one of my games against Anel. And I think I'm mulliganed here because I didn't get Sindri or Perona. Got Perona the second time, so that's good. And I'm going first. I'm going to use Moria's effect. So attach one Dawn. Choose to use the effect. And it's going to be a swing for 6k, but first cheating out Perona, mill two to the trash. Now they have to discard a card because they have five cards or more. They discarded Reject, and then they took the hit to life. They played out Kikunojo. Now Kikunojo at this point, would I, I'm not sure why they played it out because I can remove it, especially against black decks. Kikunojo, if you have three life and you get rid of it, your opponent gains a life. So here I want to focus on removal. So I'm doing the Great Eruption to minus two cost and then attaching two Dawn to Moria. But first I thought swing, swing with a uh, Perona would have been better. So swinging with Moria, doing the effect, getting out Absalom, sending two cards to the bottom of the deck, and then KO and Kikunojo. Anel's already down to one life. 
and rearranging his life with Hiori. So now I'm thinking could be some kind of a trigger there. Uh, could be something that could pop a five cost or lower. If I had a Sabo, that'd be nice to play out to protect my characters. But I don't think I got one. Or I had one until that point. Just gave him Perona. I can play Perona out again if I need to. Considering he has more than five cards. He also put out Shirahoshi. Shirahoshi, you don't want to take that out with effects. If you do, it adds a life to their, uh, to their life. Adds card to their life. So I just kind of ignore it. Unless I'm going to take it out with a, th a swing. And just deciding what to do here. What the best course of action is. Kuzan can lay out a lot of pressure. Uh, first, going to swing with Absalom. Try to see what they're hiding. And they don't show me. They end up countering out. And then swing 6k, sending, forget who that was, the trash, uh, Rabalucci. And I cheat out Perona, so he has to discard a card. And then I'm going to hard cast Kuzon. So I can draw a card and then apply that pressure. Suru, that's good. 2k counter. And then I think my opponent is just kind of thinking here for a bit. You do typically want to keep yellow at 2 life just in case, especially with the Nell, if they have Yamato, because then they can just add another life when they play it out. But I was just having fun kind of just going at the life. And just checking my options here. I have uh, 9 Dawn, I believe. Yeah, I left one standing. Doing removal on Hiori in case he has the Momonosuke blocker, the 6k. Because that can add any Wayno character to the top of your life. And just kind of messing around, you know, doing minus 2 cost on Shirohoshi. Wasn't going to remove it anyway, because I don't want to give him another life. But now if he has Momonosuke... Probably like, oh no. And I'm not sure why he was swinging at Suru. Not a big deal. I have won games with Suru before, but I'm not, I wasn't really worried about that. Yep, so there you get the Yamato. Thankfully, he was at, I believe, he was at 2 life though. So I didn't get total value out of that. And then I have 10, so I'm going to reduce 5 costs on Yamato. And then can hard play El Meppo or Suru. Suru makes more sense because it's only minus 2 cost. And if I had an Absalom and Trash, I would get that out, but I have a Rabalucci. So I'm going to do the effect again. You do not have to do it on 2 characters, I chose to just do it on Yamato. And then played out a Borsalino. This game is actually pretty crazy, having 5 life this late in the game, especially with 10 Dawn, it's pretty wild. Not too sure what this NL player is thinking, and I believe this was on Bounty. I was hoping to go up against a better player. And he's swinging 6. And I ended up getting the Great Eruption off life and doing the trigger, which means they had to discard a card from hand. Thankfully, they got rid of that Ray, Rago, Rajo events, which is pretty crazy. And then they played all Yamato. Which I think usually, because I play in L as well, when you get toward the end, this is kind of the game plan. You keep playing big bodies. Try to manipulate life. Uh, hopefully get a few swings in at your opponent. But he needs, I think, a little bit of a better game plan. With an L, you always want to imagine they have one more life than they do. So right now there's two there on the board. I imagine that there's three. So you'd have to um, connect four times in order to go for lethal. 
and swing seven with Absalom. And I'm just thinking about lethal now. So I'm assuming they didn't really have much counter. They use kick and Ojo. That life goes back. No problem here. Swing it again. So seven, 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 nine, nine would be my final. Oh, and then he got a beige. So now he's got to hope that this one goes through. And <laughs> he took out the, he used the blocker. And I think after I did the Borso, I was like, oh, but it doesn't really matter. My board is still good. I still have Moria. He would need to play out a character like Yamato um, to add another life at this point. So yeah, now it's like he has uh, three life because you know, I always imagine he has one more card than he does because of his ability. But I'm not too worried because that means I just need to land uh, three attacks in order to win. So here, he has three cards. So that's what, six plus five. I would swing probably nine or seven. Nine, I think if he were to counter, he'd have to use everything to counter out. Unless he had that three counter events, the you're the one that should disappear. And he drops another Kiku Nojo in the trash. And I'm gonna do nine, nine. Because I'm guessing doesn't have the counter. Let's see. Hopefully it's not a beige. Not a beige. Oh, I did more than 9 9. Jeez. 9 and 11. And there's no way. That's it. GG's. All right. We have another bounty match up here against Sakazuki. I did get a Sindri, so I'm keeping that hand. Playing her out for one Dawn. So I was able to trash five. And this is really good because if you see, I have a lot of options. You have Hogback, so he can pull something from trash with his effect. You have Absalom, so he can bottom deck something, or sorry, he can KO something. And with Moria in my hand, I could play Rob Lucci and hopefully have some kind of removal put in there before I would get to that turn, the eight down turn, nine down turn. Also Sindri, so like Hogback could pull her out as a 2K counter. It's all good. Borsalino if you need a blocker. Really good mill there. And then I pull a uh, Great Eruption. Add one Dawn to Moria for his effects. And thankfully was able to mill two and get Perona in there after I sent Sindri to trash. Which is going to force Sakazuki to discard a card. And then he's going to take his life. Being a four life leader, pretty good. Because Moria's a five life leader. And when you're swinging on Sakazuki, typically at the beginning, he'll take it. And as I'm playing, I just check my trash over and over. Marvel at it. He's swinging six. Usually people will do that. And unless they're law players, usually they will swing five. He plays out Hina. And I will minus two cost on her. So she goes down to one cost. And then just hard cast Rob Lucci, hard play him. So that I can send both of those to the trash, the Branu and the Hina. And then swing five and five. So with my trash being stacked up really nice, I wasn't too worried about using Mori's effect that turn. I already have Gecko in hand. I mean, what more could you ask for? When you're either in a mirror match or you're going up, going up against Sakazuki, you want to get Moria's. Uh, sometimes game comes down to whoever has more Moria's in hand. So he's cycling his cards, uh, taking costs, sending my character trash, I believe that was. Pass his turn. Hog back and 7k. So now I could do a couple things. I could play like brand new Sabo. Don't remember what I was thinking here. Maybe there was a purpose. What am I doing? Maybe I wanted to get Toshigi out of there or no, probably get another 2K. Oh no, okay, I played Perona so you would discard a card from hand. 
Looking back on it, I think I should have done the brand new Sabo. And just playing on Borso. Get a little blocker up there. It is really important to reduce hand size. And when your opponent's swinging at you, Borsalino becomes a 6k. But yeah, definitely brand new Sabo. I would have been able to go through a lot more cards. So he gets first Moria out, Luchi, El Meppo. Uh, Moria thrives off the grave. That's kind of the point of the leader. So I don't really care that my stuff gets sent to the to the grave. I'm gonna do the same thing right back at him. So doing the Moria, Luchi, El Meppo, best play, one of the best plays for removal. Especially if you're able to reduce costs on something beforehand. And this is something I also do. I do swing with my blockers a lot of the times. Why not? I mean, they're when they swing, if they swing back at them when he's rested, he's still a 6k. So still offering a little bit of protection. And it caught it gives them a reason to swing at them. So I'm just trying to get value out of him. Pass turn. Thing is that what it's got to be a 10 on five cards usually sakazuki will start getting lower in cards later in the game and i was checking his trash they don't have a lot of 2k counters usually it's like eight um so not a big concern i think i was looking for those in trash oh he might have cycled the luchi Maybe he's playing another... No, he doesn't have enough for a Moria. I think he is playing the brand new. Looking for a Navy. He drew Houndblaze, Trash, the other two. Looks like Suru was one. Swinging at Borso. Not a big deal. He's probably going to bottom deck something. He has the Hound Blaze. Unless he's going to leave that. I'm not sure. Ice Age. Wow. And let's see. Deck bottom Moria. Ruthless. Just clear him on board. That's all he's doing. Now I can't remove the Sabo this turn. Because the Sabo is being protected. So the question is, what to do? I'm going to protect my Luchi from being removed by playing out that Sabo. Then I have five left. I could play out another Sabo. There you go. So going through, you know, I'm just cycling a bit and kind of stalling because he has one life, which means two hits for lethal. If I get enough bodies on board, I could easily take him out. He has to hit me four times, so... That would be definitely a lot. All I really need are two good swings. If he can't protect Sabo next turn, I could remove Sabo and then swing with my other characters. Or hey, he just turned him sideways. Or never mind. Maybe he was, he was blocking there. A little, late, a little late for me. All right, let's see. So he's thinking, thinking, thinking. What do you do? He ended up taking that life. Probably hoping for a Hail Mary. Going there, I'm going to counter with Suru. Now there's not... Well, what he could do is bottom deck, which she just did with that uh, event. What is that? I think it's an OPO6 event. Murakuma, Murakuma. Clears my board. Oh no. And then I'm just thinking, hey, if you, let me pause here a second. Only need to land one hit. So with him having one card, that means that he can't defend a 7k swing. So all I would have to do is get rid, rid of Sabo and then that's it. I uh, swing. I don't know if I have an Absalom in trash. There's a couple different things. So if I reduce costs, 
uh, five on Sabo, have an Absalom, do Moria's effect, then I'm good to go. He probably, now he knows. That's it. I must have a Absalom there. So swing, use card, can't even defend a 7k. That's it. Textbook. Good match. All right, and we got a match up against Queen, and I was able to get Sindri, so that's super good. Get some stuff in hand. Queen is a very interesting leader. I do like him a lot. Uh, just the whole idea of getting your hand size down, your life down, so that you can add life cards if you're able to get out like a nine or an eight cost. Anyway, I attach my second turn, I attach a Dawn and then use Mori's effect, get Perona out there so the queen has to discard a card. Kind of helps queen a little bit, but I'm fine with that. Want to try to get some cards out of their hand. They tend to run a lot of blockers. I did experiment with queen recently. It's a lot of fun. A lot of people don't expect it. And it looks like they are thinking, oh, they got a, they have a cat. They sent to Trash and a Sanji. They're swinging 6k. Cool. And I'm just using the trigger so they have to discard a card. And they have another cat. And of course, putting out the Dofi blocker there. Doflamingo. OP01. I drew Moria, so that means I don't have to use Hogback to get another Moria this turn. I can do something else, switch up my game plan. But one and two, I could have removed Dofi, because I do see the Great Eruption there. I don't know if I'm Absalom and Trash though. So it looks like I was just doing Moria with no effect, and I could play out Kuzan, apply the pressure, draw a card to hand. So if he stays on board, I can use him to minus cost the following turn. Minus four cost. That's why he's a beast. So six to five. Do I want to keep Perona alive? No, doesn't matter. You can get her from trash. Not a big deal. Resurrect her. So we threw X Drake out there. Like I said, they run a lot of blockers. I think my deck. I had like 17 or 18 blockers. Pretty nuts. The queen deck. Okay, so just deciding. I don't see that I have... No, I don't have a Luchi. So what am I thinking here? I haven't looked at this game in a while. Swinging, doing the effect. Looks like I'm doing a hog back to get, I'm assuming, a 2k. Yep, so just pull the Perona. I can have more counter. Not a bad move, not a bad move. Swinging at 6k and he's thinking, oh, should I block with X Drake? What should I do? Oh, he's running, he's got beige too. Sent him to trash. And he's playing out the Borso. Wants to play that blocker game. I could have swung with Kuzan and minus cost, but I didn't. From what I can remember, I don't think I had removal. I gotta, look at, I gotta see if I clicked on my trash again. And, ooh, guess what? Another blocker. Doesn't really matter to me, because they're kind of like, um, they're, two of them are low cost, so not a big deal. If I have Moria and I have Reduction, I could get rid of two of them easy. Yeah, look at my trash. Oh yeah, this is the game. I was not seeing removal. So you can see I have Helmeppo in trash, uh, Suru, all these cost reducers, but no uh, Absalom, no Luchi. They're probably in my life or something. But I think that's what I was thinking back then. I was like, what is going on, bro? Five.
eight, swing an eight, and then using Hogback again to get some more counter. Because typically people like to swing six at Moria. So if you have 2k counters, you're pretty well set. Then I'm just gonna apply more pressure so that hopefully I can see removal. And if that happens, having two Kuzans, pretty wild. And if he starts playing like Yamato's or even um, Katakuri's, he would probably target my Kuzan. So it just gives him something to think about, something to target. Swing and six. Of course. Yep. See the Yamato and what he take out? A Kuzan. I didn't even remember this game, but I can just I can just tell ahead ahead of time. So let's see here. I put out another Sindri trying to get removal and trash. Trying, trying, trying. And just start packing away here. Five, five. Look at another blocker. <laughs> I could also, could have done Mori's effect to get more removal. Looks like I must have a Luchi in trash. Because I'm doing minus five, minus four, so I only need. Uh, six seven I only need minus two more on Yamato if I have a Luchi so it could be like a Suru even be a Helmepo if I want to go that far down and I was swinging at those characters because yeah I did have a Luchi probably off that Sindri so I was swinging with those because I knew I would have to replace a character um, in this case you know even a 5k body but getting rid of Yamato is more important so they can't continue to add life each turn. And not worry about Dofies whatsoever. Swing, swing, swing. See? So what do they have? A blocker? Raphael. Yeah, another Yamato. What are they going to go for here? It's got to be a four cost. And the Kuzan, like I said, he's a magnet. Everybody wants to get rid, uh, rid of him. I have a lot of reduction in hand. Kind of like, hey, you want to play? I will play. We'll keep playing this game. I don't see an Absalom. Nada, nada, nada. So here, I think just hoping if I do his effect that Absalom pops up in the trash, which he did. I don't even think he was there before. Sometimes you just get really lucky. Oh, and what did I do? I went for Perona? Oh, you know what? I didn't reduce more before that. If I had reduced more, but that would have been gambling. Um, if you want to gamble, that's fine. But I didn't know Absalom was going to show up there. So now it's kind of like, ooh, should I have done that? And I, I could just play the Borso so I could stall. Because now I have Absalom. See, they just keep adding to life. You got to keep up that pressure. Yep. So the Borso swinging with Moria, pile on that pressure. Good old Luchi. They're not using their blockers. Or Salino. Let's see what they did. A 
So this next one, if they add a life, yeah, they must have not have a lot to play. Maybe they're gonna go after my Moria, but then I could just block it with my Borso. Oh, they went after Luchi. Interesting. They probably thought I had enough counter for Moria is why. And I'm protecting Moria here. <laughs> Thankfully got a Luchi in hand. So that's pretty dope. If only I had more cost reduction, but I'm gonna hard play Luchi. Can't do anything else. Doing Moria's effect here. Uh, Absalom doesn't really help me. I think I was just trying to get another body out there. And then swinging to apply pressure. Only need to land two hits. So with this, they could counter out. Instead they took life, now they can't because that's nine. They have two in hand. So if they have nine, maybe they are gonna play a Sanji, another Yamato, because they only attach one to Queen. So, oh no, and they attach one here, so maybe they have a Katakuri. Nope, X-Drake, little blocker. And they're, I think they're rearranging their life. Or sorry, their cards in their deck. I likely, I'm, I'm not even pausing it, probably could have gone for game right away instead of throwing that uh, Borso out there. But doing this instead, just gonna chop him down. A little bit at a time. And now he's gonna have to use X-Drake. Clear the board. Remember, that's the purpose of Moria controlling the board. He's sending more, my Gecko Moria to life. That's fine by me. I like having more life. Sends Luchi to trash, and now it's just easy. Yeah, easy. So the reason I say easy is they had one card in hand, and they had one life card. So you would swing seven if you, you know, if you want to. I had fork characters so there's no way they could have gotten out of it um swing seven swing nine that's it uh that's just the way she goes just uh, basic lethal math but still a lot of fun okay here's the game against law and law in the meta is really coming up doing super well uh, he's play being played a lot in the east and with EBO one coming out with Kid and Killer, and what is it, uh, Bond Clay, which is number two, or Mister Two, he's doing very very well. Uh, he can be a real challenge for Moria. But anyway, here's a game. I ended up getting Sindri, so I kept play out uh, Sindri, mill five cards. Unfortunately, got an Ice Age there in the trash. I can't use it. And then attaching one Dawn to Moria, swinging, using the effect, sending out Perona, so the Law is a discarded card, and there's that uh, Bond Clay. And then he took the hit. Now, usually, I forget how I played this game, but people say you don't want to go at life. You want to try to clear board until 
you go wide with your own board and then you can go for lethal now for me um sometimes it works for me to actually go at life so he discards more cards because if he starts getting stuff out there like gordon's you know he's missing power he's bottom decking with his uh leader effect he can do some real damage real fast he's swinging six and do i use it do i not just checking my trash and i used it to try to get the trigger there off of uh, great eruption forcing him to discard a card discards another bond clay and he's doing his leader effect to bottom deck my perona thankfully i drew another one now i'm swinging away at him not using my leader effect so i'm gonna hard play kuzon just to kind of distract him a bit give him something to be you know worried about like i said kuzon's a magnet everybody's attracted they want to get rid of him don't want him to stick to the board now he's swinging six it's funny because usually the law players i play against will swing fives but a lot of people think that just swinging six at uh, Moria's a game winner strategy. So some people will do that. Oh, we got the little chopper from EB01 out there. Great card, cute little card there. And Bond Clay. So it's six again. And what did, what else did Chopper have? I don't know if it had a um, activate main. Do not recall. I'm going to build my uh, law deck and start playing that. So here I'm going to swing and subtract four cost from Chopper. Oh, his is when attacking two down, give up two of your opponent's characters minus three power. Yeah, so definitely I read that when I was playing and wanted to get rid of Chopper. That's a really strong effect for him. Do not want that sticking on board. Uh, Bond Clay either. I want to get rid of Mr. Two there. And I'm cheating out Absalom with Moria's effect. Sending Chopper to trash. 8k attack at uh, Penguin there. And now here's Bond Clay. So let me see. Bond Clay is powerful because when he's attacking, he can choose an opposing, uh, an opponent's character and match their power when he's swinging. So let's say I have Moria out there. He could swing for 9k. If you look at him now, he's only a 1k, but if I again if I had Moria anybody else could even be Sabo he could swing for 6k what's good about that though for you is that when he is sideways you can swing at him and he's only 1k so you know you can take him out really quick so he's playing out uh, useless Captain Kid blocker also manipulates Dawn He's swinging at Kuzon. And Shariah. So Shariah is a really good blocker. He can match the power of your leader. So if, see, I have like three Dawn connected to um, Moria there. So he can be an eight cost uh, blocker. Three of those cards you definitely don't want to see. I did not want to see Kid and Killer. That's the one that will usually end the game. At least in my experience. So I reduced two cost on Bond Clay. Probably should, should have just swung at him. Instead of doing that. I could have reduced on... Um... Oh, you know, I know I did that. I was trying to psych him out a little bit. I Maybe I just didn't have anything, any removal. Because if I did, I would have taken out Shariah. But I do see Absalom in trash. So I'm not sure what I was thinking there. I guess just going for a blocker and hoping and swinging. 
try and reduce his hand size, I'm sure is what I was thinking. But hindsight is 2020. Could have taken somebody out. And he plays out the Vin Smoke Raise You, so he's able to draw two cards. Very good card. If you don't have that yet, I would definitely pick it up. I think it's around like 10, 12 bucks right now. You also had the law, so when you're playing against purple, you always want to stay under, I think it's seven cards, because then they send two of yours to trash randomly. I don't remember if it's six or seven, but I try to stay under seven. So you see plus 8k on Bond Clay, it's because Moria's out there. Should have taken him out. He's got a blocker out there. Swinging seven at me. I'm gonna block and use that uh, 2K. My turn. So probably get rid of a kid. Because right now he's the strongest blocker. And just hard casting Absalom to get rid of Kid. And I can use Sabo to protect my entire board. Which actually doesn't really help against Law. Because he can just bottom deck. So I say forget that. Send out Hell Meppo, minus three cost on Shariah. So then I can use Absalom with Moria's effect and get rid of Shariah. So Bon Clay is gonna go anyway, because he was only one K, he's not gonna you know use a bunch of Dawn or uh, cards to counter that. Didn't even have enough. And then swinging sorry, I swung with Moria. Pass turn. So they are not, I don't think they were seeing the cards they wanted to this game. If they did, it would have been a very different game. But that happens from time to time. Sometimes I don't, I don't know if it was this game, the previous one. I like no removal, so that can happen. And he's thinking, gonna swing with Reju. And I just wasn't very concerned, you know, wanted to get some, get a card in hand. But on that one, I just countered out. So he's minus in cost. I'm not sure what he wants the bottom deck. I only need to land two hits in order to get lethal. Oh, there you go. So he's got a little bit of rush coming. Got that Rush Zoro, another Rush Zoro, because he played out with his effect. So, swing at five, swing at five. I can block with uh, Borso. Oh, I think I just took the life because I want to see. I wasn't worried about losing. Because I wanted to swing with Borso. He has nothing to defend himself besides law. So it just did a five and you could do a seven, nine, and that's it. But very easy ending to a game. He just gave up. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good law game. And I was saying GG cause it was, I thought it was actually pretty fun. But if he had seen, uh, Kid and killer probably would have been different. Gonna need to do a lot more practice against law. But I hope you enjoyed those games. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed and you're still listening, please subscribe. Tell your friends, family, goats. You're all goats, right? Greatest of all time. Hope you all are doing well. Take care. Peace out.